good morning students we were dealing with the writing of the constitution our two examinations we studied well i hope you are continuing with the constitution making of it so we were speaking about the guiding values of the constitution of india so now we are going to listen the speech made by gandhi uh, jawaharlal nehru previously we had listened to the words of gandhi and ambedkar today we are discussing a speech made by jawaharlal nehru the speech is famous this is one of the highest listed okay so now let us see Long years ago, we made a tie with the destiny, and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge. So, ten years ago, so many years ago, we started to move friend to have a constitution for him, to have independence of him. So he tells, so that independence has come. Long years ago, we made a tie with him, a part of the destiny, a combination of challenge with the destiny. and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge redeem means we can do it pledge is what the what we take that we will uh, do something we will think something new that's what redeem re again repeat the what that we have taken some years ago that is what the nehru tells the wala nehru tells not only or in full measure but every very substantially not only this is not come just completely or in full measure it's not to take just what in full measure but substantial means with the full understanding for the clear knowledge and accepting and uh, understanding that's a substantial means complete deep this is not just surface the what is taken with each and every word we know and we understand it fully and we know what we are going to do it that is substantial it tells this is not just to take what we word it details a what the substantial means with full knowledge with the full understanding of myself i am taking the redeeming my pledge that's what the nehru tells at the stroke of the midnight hour that means on 14 the midnight to low clock british flag was brought down indian flag was hoisted at 12:00 so he is telling that at the stroke of the midnight hour when the whole world sleeps that he may not have thought at that time some people were sleeping at that america was away that's We are looking at this. Actually, this. So when the whole world says India will avail to life and freedom, so when others are sleeping, we are getting into life and freedom, the country of India. That's what the Nehru says. So India, being control of Britain, comes out of that control. So naturally, we are able to decide. what we need that expression has come in the constitution of india is it a moment it comes which comes but rarely in history no a moment it passes we cannot catch it back it's gone but some moments in our life we are remember we keep them as important we don't permit them to be forgotten in our life so he tells like that a moment it comes which comes a early in history not every day every day we are not having independence 1947 august has come on only once 1947 august 15 the midnight the stroke of midnight has come on only once but he tells a early in history when we start step out of the old to the new old was a british administration 
जो वासुकी परिणिंदिया when a ends age of the administration of the British ends and when the soul of nation the soul of nation long suppressed fine servants controlled restricted skews and controlled now it is released it is able to speak up able to do something able to perform that's why it is able to utter utterance it is able to speak utterance or to speak till that it was not mouth was sealed Britishers are made that now citizens of India is given the freedom to speak to perform to do whatever they like for the betterment of the nation so that's what the Nehru tells a nation long suffers suffers its control finds its servants it, it is fitting that at this solemn moment we take the pledge of our dedication tells this moment solemn means with the show form and show publicity everybody is ready everybody is listening and all those that's a solemn moment publicity is important are there so that's all the moment it tells it is fitting that at this solemn moment we take a pledge of dedication to the service of the of india so we take a oath to dedicate ourselves to the service of india we are ready to sacrifice our time everything for uh, the nation of uh, india and her people country means the people so he tells uh, the people and to the still our uh, cause of humanity so when we do something good for the country naturally other neighboring countries and the world will be having that goodness that feeling of it so he tells it, it is for the all the people logami parva means everybody in the world as we are all same family for the world so for all the world it is good that's what the nehru tells okay friend freedom from the power Freedom and power bring responsibility. He tells us, freedom and power bring responsibility. This is very nice sentence. You are free and power, the powerful and free. That means you have much responsibility to others. I am a teacher. I have the freedom to come and teach you or I can go out in the class and do what I want in the class. That's my freedom. But I have got the responsibilities to see that you are studied, you are taught, you learn the things. It is my responsibility. My freedom and power doesn't make me to do whatever I like. I am bound to do whatever is needed for the academic growth of the students. That is my responsibility. I have got the power. of controlling the class that is mean i can give to somebody what are i like i have got responsibility to take care of the child protect him guide him properly it is my responsibility so that is what he tells freedom and power bring responsibility he becomes a prime minister prime minister has got responsibility to take care of the every citizen each and every citizen because there is a responsibility to the because he has got power He is the prime minister of every citizen, from the richest person to the poorest person. He is not a prime minister of one section of the people. Every prime minister is a prime minister of the country. So that is what he tells. The responsibility is there for him. The responsibility rests upon this assembly, the constituent assembly, a sovereign body representing the sovereign people of India. Sovereign means what? Supreme. Above that nobody is there. Means the sovereign or supreme body of the country and sovereign people. Means till 1947, August 15, we were not sovereign. We were not supreme. We were controlled by Britain. A satellite they control. Now we are removed. Now we are free. Nobody can control us. We are able to do what we need. 
So that's why the Nehru tells a sovereign body means constituent assembly which has no control by an external agency, by an outside agency, and representing the sovereign people, the people of India. People of India Supreme till from 1947, August 15 onwards. That's what it is. Before the birth of the freedom, we have endured all the pains of labor. What's the pain of labor? Delivering pain of labor means delivering child. You know, childbirth is so much painful. You might have at least seen in cinemas or something, they cry a lot. Mother cries a lot. And outside members will be very happy to hear the cry of the child. When the people are waiting, people when they hear the cry of the child, they smile. So smiling. So there is a pain of labor for the mother. So much pain mother bears to hear bear a child, to deliver a child. So that's why he tells before the birth, before child is born, mother cries aloud. So much of pain she is having. So that's the verse. So before the birth of the friend, here it is freedom, not child. Freedom of India. That's it. So before the birth of the freedom, we have endured. Endured means accepted, born, suffered, took into our body. So much of pain it is. We have endured means they have gone to jails, suffered a lot of challenges, many times, many problems they faced. Many were days, many months, years they were in jail. They were moving from one place to another. They were hiding. All those things they had done. So that's why they told endured all the pains of labor to bring independence for India. And our hearts are heavy with the memory of this sorrow. So many tensions and problems they faced. So the heart is full of that sorrow. Mother will forget when the child comes to the mother's hand, the pain, the pain is over. The, the cry of the child is heard. So that's all. Labor. Uh, and our hearts are heavy with the memory of the sorrow. Sorrow that they suffered for the independence of India. Some of those pains continue even now. Everything is not over. Everybody is not equal. Equality is not there. Nevertheless, the past is over and it is the new future that beckons to us now. It's telling, okay, every, all the problems are not solved, it still exists. Child is delivered, means we got independent, that doesn't mean all our problems are over. We have got problems, but we, at least we can say the future calls us, beckons and calling. The future is calling us. We can wait for the future, that's it. And the future that happens to us now. That's what the Nehru tells. Okay. Thank you very much. Be good. Happy. Enjoy. The future is not in our one or his. No, he continues. That future is not one of his or resting. He tells the future that is beckoning us. It is not of his. Resting but in incessant striving so that we, will, we may fulfill the pledge and we have so often taken and the one we shall take today. He told it is not resting, we must have more. More responsible. We must take pledge. We will so often take it and the one we shall take today. The often, this once more we will take the oath. That is what the Nehru does. The service of Indian India means the service of the millions who suffer. Nehru tells the service of India. It doesn't mean that one or two persons. It is for everybody. This is a duty of a prime minister. He tells because he has become the first prime minister. So the service of India means the service of the millions who suffer. It means the ending of poverty and ignorance and disease and equality of opportunity. So all where they are attacking. He tells her, it means the ending of poverty. Poverty existed at that. So he tells her, he support or the people, all of us, 
members of the constituent assembly should work to end the poverty and ignorance people are literate they don't have knowledge they don't have capacity to learn so many things in the world they were ignorant about it they are really uh, uneducated so that the guru uh, tells about that we are worried ignorance and this is so oh, many diseases were there at that time in the country many have no treatment if many are treatment they were not being done so the nehru tells and inequality of opportunity all are not treated equally all are not so that's the case the ambition of the greatest men of our generation has been to wipe every tear from every eye here he tells about gandhi ji the ambition the dream or thinking of gandhi ji of the greatest men of our generation that's gandhi ji has be to wipe every tear from every so every indian citizen should be free he should not be crying for anything that's what he tells so if anybody cries it is a responsibility of the government to wipe the tear that's what he tells the ambition of the greatest man of our generation has been to wipe every tear from every eye that's it gandhi ji some ambition gandhi ji this is his dream so that is also there in the constitution assembly when they were writing the constitution assembly that may be beyond us so he tells the dream may be beyond us it is not possible for a government to go to every person and to solve all the problems of the people it is not possible the citizens but as long as there are tears and suffering so our our work will not be possible it may not be possible but he tells our work will continue till the suffering is all coming to an end this is what the nehru tells okay now we will discuss about this preamble and indian preamble in the next class okay thank you very much